Hey everybody. Yes, I am on the Reno Machino, the CBR 500R. It is now back on the road. It has just had a nice fill up of fresh E5. My God, that was expensive. 15 pound 12, eight and a half liters. That's a, the 177.9 by the way. This is basically like the secondary shakedown run. If you're new to the channel, this is my other half's bike. She had to work from home during COVID. Well, still is working from home now. Watch it. <laughs> yeah, she is still working from home. In fact, everything's gone permanently that way, which is actually great for us. But unfortunately, where she wasn't riding much, her bike just sat there for a while. And then I noticed that the fork seals were leaking oil. Where when I replaced them, I discovered the forks are full of water. By the way, there are videos on all of this, every single part of it like taking them apart, fixing them, everything. Well, after I did them, they were still leaking a tiny bit of oil, annoyingly, and on closer inspection, there was a few vertical sort of scratches, striations that didn't seem to be too bad, uh, but because of their verticalness, I think it was allowing all oil through the seal, and that's probably because of lack of lubrication when they filled with water. I have no idea how they filled with water. I mean, this bike was kept outside. I'm guessing the water ran down one of the stanchions and just managed to seep in there or something. I don't know. But they had a lot of water in them, so I had to send the stanchions off to be ground and re-chromed, put them all back together, had the problem with the caliper bolt, well I've sorted that out because I, I found a trustworthy tool, well it was the same tool but long story, I think it was, uh, the tool wasn't the problem. I've already taken this for one little run just to make sure you know the wheels aren't going to fall off or anything like that. <laughs> and this is the secondary sort of give it a proper run run, because if you ever work on someone else's bike you sure as hell should be the one testing it first. I'm trusting these tyres considering they've not been let over on for a while. Of course the battery was completely dead on this um, and when you put a battery on to recharge it after it's been dead for a long time very often it'll just say I'm fully charged and you're like no you're not it's because it can't hold any more power this took a charge for a while uh, and it seems to be okay so hopefully this will give it another boost and we'll see whether it's going to be reliable or not it is quite possible that if we leave this bike for a few days that battery is just going to dissipate its power and, and not be able to restart in which case is a new battery which is not the end of the world because i don't think this one's been replaced in quite a while might be worth doing anyway I'm now doing 38 miles an hour on a 70 mile an hour road for absolutely no reason. There is literally nothing slowing these cars down. Oh, another thing I've sorted is on my DRZ, if you remember I had that LED light, which when I went for MOT, it was fine pattern wise for the UK, which is surprising because it came from America. However, it was just a little bit too low and I just couldn't get it high enough for it to pass MOT with the way it was. So slapped in the uh, the stock light to get it through its MOT and then I've made well I was going to make some entirely custom brackets to fit the light uh, because the amount of adjustment it's basically got like a, a bolt that goes straight through and a bolt that's in a u-shaped slot and you can slide about some forward so you, you know that sort of thing well as I, said, I was going to make a whole new bracket and then I suddenly realized why why not just get a dremel and extend that slot because that's all it needs is that little bit extra and sure enough I did that and everything's fine now, or well, it seems to be anyway, it's definitely come up enough. I was going to do a video, you know, fabricating the plates and doing all of that, welding on some nuts, as, you know, just captured nuts and stuff, but um, yeah, I, 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 I didn't need to, I, and I don't think you want a video of me just dremeling a hole slightly longer and going, oh, done. <laughs> well, it's good to get that light back in the DR, not that I really ride at night anymore. I really very rarely ride at night. I don't, I mean, I do like it, as I talked about in a video you know, a while ago, it's it's nice that you can see people coming around corners before they come around corners and stuff, but I just tend to write now when I'm making videos and I can't really, well, videos aren't great when they're done at night, so 
by default, I don't tend to ride much at night anymore. Why? It is very windy. Hold on. Yeah, we'll go down here as that's looking nasty. Okay, so my habit of cancelling the indicator just bit me in the butt there because Honda put the horn where the indicator is on every other bike. Check the rear brake. This has got ABS in it, so it's just going to go clonk, clonk, clonk. Yep, nice. That worked perfectly. It feels horrible. If you've never used a motorcycle with uh, ABS on the rear brake, you basically push hard and then it, well, it, it doesn't apply any more pressure but what you do feel is a smack 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 back into your hand into your hand into your foot <laughs> if it's in your hand you're doing it the wrong way mate and it's actually quite impressive <laughs> so it's good to see the rear brake is working well this is so exciting being stuck behind a pretty old lady in a range rover driving at 20 miles an hour i mean i get it it's wide but my god Oh, thank God. When you have to speed up for corner entry because someone's going that slow, you know something's going wrong. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ranting about other people's driving. I know, people can get... People can go as slow as they like. Can they? Really? I mean, birdies. Um, people do say, well, I say people, people on Facebook groups, whenever anyone points out, oh, this always happens when, you know, there's a speed camera locally in your local Facebook group, Someone points out, oh, there's a speed camera, watch out, people, and then people start saying, oh, well, if it wasn't for people speeding, they wouldn't need to worry about it, blah, 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 which is the classic old argument. But anyway, I digress. They then get into this argument of saying, well, the speed limit is a maximum, not a target. I agree with you, that is entirely true. However, when I was taught to ride a motorcycle, I was told to be within five miles an hour of the limit, because if you're not, you could be considered to be hindering traffic causing an obstruction, not showing confidence in the use of your vehicle, you know? And I mean, I can understand maybe if you're doing 60 in a 70, but when you're doing 20, 19 in a 30, 30 is basically walking pace. And you're like, God damn, that's some fast walking you'd be doing. I know people will say that anyone going that much under the speed limit is just a, it's just an, a slightly overly cautious driver. I'm like, I agree with you, but at the same time, it's those sorts of people that still just, I mean, they're only doing 19 miles an hour, but they just continue to plow through through things at 19 miles an hour. I've seen it. I don't think it shows being careful. I think it shows a fear and a lack of confidence and control of your vehicle. And that is something which I don't think you should have. If you're not entirely confident on a vehicle, in a vehicle, controlling said vehicle, you shouldn't really be on it. And I'm not saying like, you know, people who are learning on two fives and stuff, that's, ah, oh, that's it. Oh, I suppose, yeah, then I say you don't want to be too overconfident. If you're overly confident, then you're more dangerous than anything. I don't know. I just, competency, that would, that's all I want to see. Ah, perfect. Nice empty road. I want to test this front brake, so I'm basically just going to do an emergency stop. Good. There's a point, how often do you practice emergency stops? It's something you should do regularly because you want to be prepared for it when you need to do it. It's clear, try another one. Yeah. For a single disc, the brakes on this are actually all right. There's reasonable feel. They're nice and, you know, they really do grip. It's a big disc, it does help. I am extremely pleased with the Reno Machino. The forks are now great. The brakes are feeling great. Everything's good. It's now just for Reno to get, obviously she's not ridden much in the past couple of years. So we're gonna have a few little sort of round the blocks and then a bit further and a bit further. She can ride, but it's just, it's good to get your, um, 
your basic skills back before you start pushing it. But at least I'm confident that the bike is in good nick, safe, and actually working very nicely. Yes, I'm ending at a Tesco. Shh, shh, just hit the subscribe button because I'm nearly at 100k. Like, we're about 500 and something off. It's insane. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching. The Mino Machino is now a greeno, which means like go-go. Nice. Catch you in the next one.